Welcome to this special Halloween DaVinci Resolve Fusion tutorial. It's October, the month for everything scary, creepy, and weird. It's just me. Today, I'm going to show you how to create this eerie, creepy, dripping blood effect. And if you don't like blood, let's call it slime and turn it green. We can create just a few drops. We can make it be a lot drippier and faster, or we can make it thick and messy. Let's talk real quick about how this effect is made. Basically, you blur some objects and that causes them to kind of go together a little bit. And then you refine those edges to create a unified shape. So let's take a look. We're going to start with two circles. Let's blur the circles and then start refining the shape. You'll notice where the circles touch in the middle. We're going to refine the shape and that's going to come, then that's going to become a solid and kind of merge together to create that, that melting, drippy, connected effect. The dripping text effect uses the exact same technique. If you're enjoying my videos and want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, editing, fusion, creating effects, and all sorts of great stuff, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. Okay, before diving into this video, I want to show you how I'm saving a lot of time with my content creation using my Spark Effects tools. Okay, guys, I'm taking you behind the scenes and I'm going to show you how I'm editing this video and how I use the Smart Content tools. We have some transitions, we have some markers with the title text in the marker. We have some clips with colors. Open Spark Effects and click Smart Titles. Select the title comp and set up options. Click Add Titles at Markers. Animated titles are automatically added for each marker. Next, we're going to use the Spark Effects Smart Audio feature to set up sounds for our timeline. In Spark Effects, click Smart Audio. Smart Audio is going to analyze the timeline looking for transitions, markers, clip colors, and effects. Smart Audio loaded a default profile and has sounds associated with each of the transitions, clip colors, and effects. You can set sounds for each of these events and create new audio profiles. Push Insert to apply the sound profile to your timeline and set up all the audio. With one click, we now have sound set up for all the transitions and effects on our timeline. Let's talk real quick about how this effect is made. SparkFX is the ultimate workflow automation tool for DaVinci Resolve. To learn more, go to sparkfxstudio.com. You can download SparkFX, give it a try, and um, let me know what you think. All right, let's set up the dripping blood animation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some text and create some particles that are dropping down from where the text is. So let's go and we're going to add a text node and let's type, give it a name called Bloody and put that in the viewer. Now we want it to be kind of thick and um, thick. So I'm going to choose this Montserrat black font, which is pretty thick kind of give us a good starting point right there. Okay, now we want to have some particles dropping down. So we, we need to make a single blood drop and then we're going to feed that into the particle system and have all the, uh, the blood drops coming down. So to do this, we're going to use the shape system and we're going to do the S polygon and we'll do an S render. That'll render that polygon out and we're going to merge that in right on top of the text. Okay, let's select the polygon and put that in the viewer. Okay, so let's right click somewhere near the bottom. We're going to find the polygon shape and we're going to say create. And we're going to create a new ellipse and let's just set the size. We're going to set it to 0.1 by 0.1. And this is going to create a kind of a circle down there for us. To turn this into a blood drop, we just take the top point and we're just going to drag it up, grab these handles and move them in a bit. And we kind of got a blood droppy looking thing there. And you can, you can refine this if you want to. You can take some of these handles and kind of squeeze this in a bit and maybe squeeze that one. But you know, that's, that's the basic blood drop. We want it to kind of fade out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, add a rectangle mask and we're going to put it right into where this render is. And let's take a look at the merge and you'll see that it's cutting off the, uh, the blood drop at the top and the bottom. Let me see, we'll disable the mask. So what we want to do is we're going to do a, put a soft edge on it because we just want the blood drop to kind of fade out a little bit. And then we're going to take this mask and bring it down and keep adjusting the soft edge and size. So it barely, the tail barely fades out. Let's take a look at the, uh, Right there. So that's going to be our blood drop. Um, let's move the mask a little bit down further, make it a little bit bigger because we want it solid at the bottom. Now, what we, what we need to do is we're going to need to take this blood drop and we're going to put it into the particle system. So let's disconnect it from this merge for now and shift these nodes over. And we're going to click this node right here to add a particle emitter. And then we're going to click this one to do the particle render and we're going to take the particle renderer and we're going to put that into the merge because we want to render, render the, we want to render a bunch of these little blood, blood drop shapes right on top of the bloody text. All right, we have some particles right here in the middle, but we want the particles to be emitted where the text is. So any place where there's text, we want that to be a potential where a particle comes out. So for the emitter, we're gonna click that and choose region, and we're gonna set the region to bitmap. And you'll see we get this new input here. We're gonna take the output of the text 
and put it right into the emitter. So that means wherever the text is, that's where we're gonna be emitting particles. And you see, we'll just take a look right now. So we'll flip it to uh, the particle style. We'll just, we're gonna set the uh, particle style to the ingon. We're gonna size that up, make it a bit bigger. You can see we're starting to have some particles show up right here. And then we're gonna have to have the particles drop we're gonna use a directional force. So hit the uh, P emitter and hit control space and search for P directional force. And you'll see we have a bunch of particles falling off. And this is where we can kind of play with the uh, the speed of all this, the direction. Um, but we're just gonna have it go down and then we're gonna have them go a little bit slower like that. So that's kind of the beginnings of the particle. But you see that we don't really want those little circles. We wanna have our blood drops. So go to the emitter for style. and shoot, Instead of choosing ingon, we're gonna select bitmap. And we get another input right here for our bitmap shape. I'm gonna take the output of the render and put it right into that green input. And there we go, we have a bunch of particles. So there's really, there's too many and they're too big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna size them down. And this is on the styles section. Size those down. You can see there's a bunch of them are falling. And then we're gonna to go to the control area here and we're just gonna put it at 0.5. So we're just gonna have a few little things dropping down. And you'll see there, the particles are starting out where the bloody text is. And let's make some adjustments. We're gonna uh, make the size a little bit bigger and we're gonna vary the size so that some of them are gonna be big and some of them are gonna be small. Now, one thing you'll notice is occasionally we'll have, like right here, we'll have a, a particle that gets emitted right here, but it's a little bit taller than the bloody text part. So we're gonna put a mask on the renderer so that the particles are only gonna be showing where the mask is. So we can take this and bring it down a little bit and you'll see it's gonna cut off that stuff right on the top and we'll just size it out to be the full width and bring it down a little bit and right there. So any particles that are emitted right on the top, they're gonna to get kind of cropped off. All right, that's step one. Now, as we talked about, step two is we're gonna take all this and we're just gonna blur it. And we're gonna create a big blurry blobby mess and then bring it back together so we kind of get a unified drippy look. What we're gonna do is right outside of this merge, we're gonna add a blur. So we can click this little icon right here to do a blur and we'll bring up the blur. Let's put that in the viewer. And that's a blurry thing. It doesn't look like much, but you'll see that these things start to kind of touch each other. And what we can do is we can take the, the transparency levels and kind of tighten that up and bring it back together with the bitmap node. In the node area, hit control space and search for bitmap. And we'll take the output of the blur and put it into the bitmap. And this is where we're really gonna start refining our shape. So put the bitmap in the viewer and you'll see that we have these handles. So we have a low and a high, and that's gonna take the low and the high alpha level and kind of crop them off. So we can do this and bring this over and make some adjustments. And you'll see that we kind of get this gooey, drippy, droppy mess. So, and this is where everything is being combined. And it's probably being blurred a little bit too much. Let's bring this down, maybe a little bit more. This is where you kind of got to play with it. You want to play with it, you can kind of start seeing some things in there. Let's go back to the bitmap and let's start playing with it. Okay, I've just been playing here with the settings. Um, you kind of got to try some different stuff out, see what works, kind of get the blobby things going. I think I'm going to make the blood a little bit bigger here. So let's uh, go back to the emitter. And we're gonna to go to the size, I'm gonna crank the size up of those, those blobs and the size variance. Make it, let's try to make it pretty drippy. We also wanna do a fade in, so we're gonna take the, uh, the fade in, we're gonna fade the particles in so they kinda of come in a little cleaner. Now that we have the bloody drippy text, let's, let's just kinda of go over this. So we have the, the particles dropping down and that's being merged on top of our text. This text can be whatever you want, so let's go ahead and, cha let's go ahead and change it. We're gonna change it to, let's say, spooky or creepy. Hit our bitmap and now we have kind of it coming down off of the creepy. So you can really do this off of any image. So we have our directional force, which pushes everything down. It's merged on top. We're gonna blur it all together. And then where you can see where the, the kind of, once it's blurred, we get some combinations here where things start overlapping a little bit. And then we use the bitmap node to bring it together. And that's how you can kind of see these drips coming off of it. And if you want it more drippy, you just crank up the blur a little bit. It's gonna be a lot drippier kind of get it. You don't want it too blurry because you want to be, at least be able to at least be able to see some of the definition of the letters. So it's kind of depends on the font that you're using, how blurry you're able to make it. In this case, let's make it green. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, background node and we're going to set it to green. And this is going to be kind of the green slime. We'll take the output of the bitmap and put it into the background and put the background in the viewer. All right, there we go. We got our green slime. So, okay. So now that we have the background, let's make it a little bit of a gradient. So we're going to go, um, choose gradient for the background and move this to on the top and have it go down to the bottom. And we're gonna set it from kind of a lighter green to a darker green. So you got a kind of a light green on top. And then the second point over here on the right, we're gonna set this to like a lot darker green. We kind of have a, a creepy green gradient. The first one's a little too bright. So we're gonna bring that down just a touch. 
Now let's add in uh, the background. We're going to take this and merge it on top of the, the background. And we're going to make the background, um, we'll do the same thing. We'll do like a gradient. Um, this one's going to be just a real dark gradient. We're going to go from black to, to probably not quite black. Just a super dark gray. Barely there. Okay, now that we have our drippy text, the next thing we're going to do is we want to give it a kind of a 3D effect to make it pop just a little bit. So let's uh, go down here and we have the, the text on the background. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it into an erode dilate. Hit control space and search for erode dilate. And we're going to take that background and put it right into the erode dilate. And then we're going to take another background and this one is black. So with the erode dilate, we're going to take this and we're going to shrink this stuff down a little bit. And this is going to be kind of a, for an inner kind of a shadow look. Put this into the background. So now it's black and we're going to merge this right on top of our green text. So now we have the black on the green. I'm going to add a blur in, blur it out just a little, just a touch like that. And then come in here and bring the, the blend down. So we got a kind of a, you see it's starting to get a little bit of a 3D look. Now that we kind of got that, we, I want to give it a, a light edge and a dark edge to make it really pop. We're going to use an edge detect node for this. So hit control space and search for edge detect. We're going to take the output of the background one and put it into the edge detect. And let's put that in the viewer. All right, there we go. So you can kind of see it's finding those edges for us. So it's kind of a, that's kind of a cool look right there. And we're going to choose grayscale edges. And we're going to take this and we're going to merge it right on top. And this one, we're going to set the blend mode to screen so that we're only going to see that white edge. Now, what I want to do here is I want to take the white edge. I'm going to move it a little bit. So I move it just in like that. So it's sitting just inside and down, kind of like kind of like a 45 degree angle. So if this, is, this simulates the light coming from the, the top left. And we're going to blend, take the blend mode down a little bit. Now, you notice that because I shifted the, the edge, it's going over here and it's kind of overlapping our text. So all I need to do is take the output of the background where our text is, and we're going to add that as a mask. And that's going to cut off that stuff that overlapped to the right. And let's bring it back up just a little bit. And we could add some blur. You can really kind of do some different effects with this. And then we're going to do one more. So we're going to take a, uh, a black background for the edge, the dark side edge. We're going to put the edge detect into that. And we're, for this one, if you take a look at the edge detect, okay, so here, so we have the edge detect here, and you see it's white and black. So we're going to go to this background. And it's, you see, everything is there because it's based off of the alpha. And we click on the settings and we're going to change this to luminance. And it's only going to look at the luminance of the mask input. And you can see that that's only, it's only going to keep where the white lines are because that's what has the highest level of luminance. So there's our black line. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to merge that right on top of this merge four and put that in the viewer. You can't really see it because the background is dark. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to shift it. And you'll start to be able to see it right there. And we're gonna to need to do the same thing. I'm gonna make this background a lot lighter here. Go back to a kind of a, whatever, a gray, there we go. So now, now you can start seeing the, the background there. You can see the black and you can see it's overlapping on this top part. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take this background where the, uh, the main text is and put it into the mask input. And that, take that took that one out. And there we go. We got, uh, got our kind of a creepy drippy text. And this is where you can play with a lot of, a lot of the different options. We can adjust the blur to create a, create a more blobby thing. And that's with no blur, you kind of you see what we get. And we can adjust the, uh, let's go ahead and adjust, we can adjust the bitmap here. This is going to select which levels of alpha we want to include. And we can go back to, let's uh, do our particles real quick. So you can show you, show you how we can play with this. We're going to take this, uh, the polygon, we're going to do an S transform. And we're going to make everything a lot thinner. So we're going to take the X size and bring it down. We get little thinner drips, or we can do thicker, chunkier drips. And if you want a lot more, if you want to go crazy, we can go to the emitter and go to control and let's set the number to two. And that's just going to be a lot of stuff dripping down. And let's do a lot of thin stuff dripping down. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. Let's do a little bit more. Put in there, put four in, double it. And then we can use the directional force. If we want it to go faster, we add a little bit more force here and it's going to drip a lot quicker. See there, this is not quite good. So that, that's where we need to clean up the uh, the bitmap here. Do the bitmap, and you see if we bring these levels together, it's going to get a lot cleaner look. The closer those are together, the cleaner the edge is going to be. We can shrink the Y size and make them fat. Just having some fun, playing around with stuff. And we can also come in and let's change the color. Let's go back to the, the bloody color that we started with. I'm going to do a red, dark red, and we can go to a yellow. And bring that in so you can make you can really do whatever you want to with this create lots of really cool effects 
Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That's the uh, kind of the creepy drippy text. It's really simple. You just blur some stuff out and then use the bitmap node to refine all those edges and figure out which parts of the transparency you want to keep and it'll flatten, that all, flatten it all out and create one solid image for you. So you can kind of blur and merge anything together. Um, I actually used this for a, a morph kind of effect a long time ago, it works great. Thanks so much for watching. Have a happy Halloween. Make sure that you download Spark Effects, give it a try, let me know what you think. I'm looking to make it as good as possible and put all kinds of great things in there. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, or feedback. Got a lot more videos coming soon.